Today, I would like to illustrate how we perform a valuation or how we value a futures contract. And that requires understanding the mechanics of the futures contract. And I'm going to use the commodity that was the best performing commodity in 2017. I bet you don't know what that commodity was. Happy New Year. I'm continuing my series that introduces derivatives approximately following the FRM syllabus, and in this case, more specifically following John Hull's notation. John Hull's written the Bible for derivatives, and I wanted to illustrate the mechanics of a futures contract with an emphasis on the variables that we know from experience oftentimes cause confusion to new learners. And so to illustrate the mechanics of the futures contract, I just looked up for the year 2017, what was the best performing commodity? And to my surprise, it was palladium, which surged apparently over 50% during 2017. Palladium is a rare earth metal. It's known for its use in catalytic converters, but also has application in electronics, medicine, and dentistry. And as we speak, well, I have, I have rounded and exaggerated my numbers as usual to keep the example as simple as possible, but as we speak, the spot price of palladium is in the ballpark of $1,000 per troy ounce. A troy ounce is slightly heavier than a regular ounce. And so we denote that S sub zero almost always. Uh, the zero meaning immediately in time right now, after all the spot price, also called the cash market, that's what we could pay right now to receive one troy ounce of palladium. And there, at any given point in time, there should only be one spot price, or roughly. Otherwise, there would be arbitrage opportunities. Okay, so that's here. And then what I have in the darker orange is something that very roughly approximates the current uh, forward curve or futures curve for this commodity. And I, I, I gave it some a uh, little more upward slope than it actually currently has. Technically, we call that contango. Okay, and then you'll notice a difference here in the terms of the pricing. We only have one spot price, but there, are, at any given point in time, there are several futures prices. I actually got these, or you can get these off the website. Very, they're very well designed uh, website at cmegroup.com. Um, CME is, I think, by far the largest derivative exchange in the world. And for all of those, all of these commodities, they have almost real-time schedules of the currently observed, currently trading futures prices. So, so I would just highlight the notation for a moment. Um, if we go out and we we're here in January, early, early January, um, for delivery next month, we would denote that F zero comma one. And easy to gloss over this, but. This is this is uh, this is meaningful. The zero refers to the fact that these are currently observable prices. This is the first thing that can be a challenge about futures. Um, these are all currently observable prices, hence the zero. In the case of February, it's the price. This the one means in one month forward, the uh, futures traded price. So if we enter a long position we would be promising to pay $1,020 in exchange for um, one troy ounce of palladium. And so here there is a contract for delivery in two months, March, and for delivery, <coughs> excuse me, in three months, April. And then we skip May, and then palladium is fairly typical in the sense that as part of the design of the contract, the exchange specifies this, for the near-term months, we have two or three in sequence, one, two, three, and then we kick into a quarterly schedule. And for Palladium, the quarterly schedule is June, September, December, March, and June again. So you can see they're three months out. And then Palladium happens to stop relatively shortly in 15 months. But oil, in contrast, I believe the oil futures contracts extend out for nine years. Um, so that's the futures contract plotted here. And then these are the futures prices. And I'm just imagining that we are going to enter, we're going to be a buyer in the December 2018 futures contract. 
And so notationally, that's F sub zero, the price we observe today for delivery in what is for us 11 months forward, which is the December contract. And that price is 1,200. So if we're the long position, this is going to be, this is an obligation of promise to pay this per troy ounce for the commodity. If we're the short position, this is a promise to receive this amount in exchange for delivering uh, a troy ounce. The contract, as usual, has a specification for size. I mentioned in the previous video um, that that's a contract specification that um, is designed um, by the exchange. And so in the case of palladium, the contract size happens to be 100 troy ounces. So when we take a long position, it's a promise to purchase 100 troy ounces, not one ounce. If we take a short, it's a promise to deliver 100 troy ounces for this price that will not change for us. And so you can see the notional on this contract is price times size or $120,000. So the first thing, the first thing I wanted to highlight in terms of the variables that I mentioned is the delivery price. If we are here in early January, enter into the long position, a promise to purchase, then the delivery price equals the forward price of our contract. So it's $1,200. And the delivery price, I'm following John Hall. The notation here is K. We use K for the delivery price. I have a subscript referring to the December 2018 contract. So when we enter the contract, the delivery price equals the futures price. And so that means that the value is zero to both counterparties. We're the long, but almost all derivatives, we assume and expect that when we enter into the contract, it's a fair deal for both parties and therefore has a net present value of zero to both counterparties. After all, if this had positive value for us immediately for something that we're not paying for, there's not an initial cost on a futures contract, then it would have a negative value for our counterparty and they wouldn't enter into it. True, this is an exchange and the counterparty is actually the um, exchange who has interposed or novated as the counterparty, but there is a counterparty nonetheless. And at inception, the delivery price equals the forward or futures price. And so the value of this contract denoted with small f is zero. And oftentimes what is confusing to new learners is the fact that the delivery price will not change going forward. That was baked into the contract. What does change is the spot price, of course, and also the futures prices. And so to illustrate that, I'm just doing a thought experiment where we march forward in time three months. So now I'm gonna assume we're marching forward February, March to April, 2018. And so then I'm moving up to this timeline here. And then I just made the audacious assumption that the spot price of palladium really launches or jumps way up to from 1000 to 1500. So a 50% jump in three months. And then I also have to make an assumption about what will be the, the new forward term structure or future term structure. And I assumed a parallel shift. So we'll go up to April, there's still only going to be one spot price, but there'll be a new set of, of dynamically changing uh, futures prices. We have are the long position, we've entered into a December contract. So notice the notation, if we go forward in time three months, we are now referring to the same contract, but as F0, 8, because it's now only eight months away. We are approaching maturity. The delivery price, has not changed. It remains what we promise to pay for the commodity. But there's been good, this price increase is very good news for us. Our December futures price has increased up to 1675 It's almost, but not quite, the $500 increase in the spot price. Um, I assumed a $500 increase in the spot price in a parallel shift. Why didn't? Why does not my futures contract also increase by 500, but instead increases by 475? Well, that's because here in the dark forward term, term structure, we were here and we took out a 
uh, 11 month, we took a long position on 11 month contract. And we're now here. So we have, we are now moving down the term structure from 11 to eight months. And so uh, mostly our futures price increased by the $500, but we actually lost um, some price. There's some price depreciation as we, I think of this as we slide down this term structure curve. Technically, this is called the negative roll return that is associated with a curve that is a contango. When this curve is upward sloping, and naturally, if it doesn't change, and if we just approach maturity, the price is moving down. So that's why this is 475 as opposed to 500. Not actually the topic of this video, but what is the topic is just the revised value of this contract that after all was necessarily zero when we entered the contract. And what is it today? Well, what the value of the contract is actually a pretty straightforward financial calculation. Um, F small f denotes the value of the contract. And if we're the long position, we're going to be receiving a commodity with a price of F sub zero, and we're going to be paying for it the delivery price that does not change. And so that difference is the future value or cash flow to us as the long position. True, most of these contracts do not go to maturity over 90% settle, but this is still going to be our cash payoff value. So that part doesn't really matter. However, this is, as we sit here in April, this is, <coughs> excuse me, a payoff eight months forward. So we want to discount it. Um, and we'll discount continuously, pretty typical in academic finance to discount continuously at the risk-free rate times the um, ma maturity or term. So E raised to the negative RT. And in this case, so the revised value of our futures contract is the updated forward price of 1,675 minus that unchanged delivery price of 1,200 discounted at the risk-free rate. So E to the negative 0 0.03 multiplied by how many years forward that is. And in years, that's eight divided by 12 months. And so that is why we have 466, and that's a little bit less than just the uh, raw difference between the forward price and the delivery price owing to the discounting. So the price, the, the spot and forward price of Palladium jumped up radically in the neighborhood of $500, and the value of our futures contract, therefore the value, small f, increased by almost 500. If we're the short position, then we just switch the F and the K here. And so it's a fairly symmetrical um, payoff. So if we were short, we're going to have a loss in this neighborhood. And so in addition to the mechanics, that's really what I wanted to highlight here, the variables that we use to value this. Here for the long position, K is the delivery price. That was contractual. It does not change. The Futures price definitely does change. It's as dynamic as the spot price. So it's largely going to be correlated to the changing spot price. But it's not only a function of the spot price, but any changes in the shape of this term structure. I have a parallel shift, so my contango um, remained a contango. But if uh, the spot price increased, but I suddenly shifted to an inverted curve called a backwardation, that would have an offsetting effect and would be worse for me. So it's not just the spot price, but also the shape of the term structure that informs this futures price that is changing for us as we approach maturity. And then the value, therefore, is the difference between them, the simple difference between them in future value terms that is discounted to the present. So I hope that's helpful. Thank you.